Nonprofit Spotlight is here at AHA, Healing Arts for Teens, and we're talking to co-director Jennifer Freed. What is the vision for a future teen who has participated in the AHA program? What we like to think is if you give a teenager a solid sense of character, compassion, and creativity, what they end up with is a purpose in life, a sense of what they can contribute, and also a feeling for what their community looks like and diversity and being part of that and a important member of that as opposed to just an isolated teen. And how does AHA work to achieve that goal? AHA is in most all the high schools and we have a solid after school and summer school program after school and what we do is we work on a very high mentorship ratio one adult per every six teens and we do these very adventurous experiential creative exciting exercises where youth learn to be responsible and care for one another and take care of each other and learn what's called social and emotional intelligence. So tell me more about how you work uh, directly in the programs and build this confidence in teenagers for such a thing. We always start out whether we're in school or after school with one of 350 games we've created or learned over the years to get people blending, interacting, loosening up taking away that posture so many teens get about being cool and being special and trying to build a sense with every teen that their unique self matters. So we play games. Then we get into a topic. Let's say the topic is managing emotions, delaying gratification. We do a little bit of teaching what that is. Then we break kids up into small groups with an adult or two and we have them explore that topic through writing, through movement, through sharing, many different ways. But our philosophy maintains that if a young person is active in their own education, if they're contributing as well as receiving, we're going to have a lot more participation. And all our programs are voluntary. Nobody is forced to come, and we have a very high return rate. What kind of person makes a good facilitator? And can anyone off the street, you know, go through, a, obviously, an extensive training, but volunteer as a facilitator? We actually are very selective about who joins the AHA team. We're very open to volunteers. We've had many, and we have the best staff imaginable. Why? One, they have to love working with teenagers. Not everyone does. Two, they have to have an educational or an experience background that suggests they're very talented and very responsible because one thing teenagers need is consistency and reliability. So we have a staff that is so dependable and at the same time full of vitality and creativity and life. So when we're interviewing volunteers or paid staff, we're looking for people that want to go beyond themselves to help the community and get a really big payback in terms of gratification. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for telling us all about AHA and the great programs that you do here and the success stories. It was a pleasure. Now, we're going to be talking with a facilitator of AHA. Can you tell me about who we're going to be uh, talking with next? Well, Mauricio Mendez has come on board AHA in the last two years, and he is a very deeply soulful man who actually just had a baby this year, and so he's very inspired to help the youth of Santa Barbara. And he's one of our core facilitators and pretty much does every single group that AHA does. So he's a great person to talk to. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Who will be our, our guest after Mauricio? Well, we've asked Leandra Harris to talk to you because she joined AHA fresh from San Jose in a very violent background. And she had a real hard time at first buying into the program because it was so unlike what she had been used to. And she not only did the program first youth in her family to ever finish high school, but now she's come back to help as a facilitator in training, or what we call FIT. Thank you, Jennifer. Let's go meet Mauricio. Mauricio, how did you come to uh, be a facilitator with AHA? I found myself in a position where I was looking for work that I wanted it to be meaningful, and um, I was lucky enough to just, I guess, out of the blue, find AHA through Craigslist, and um, here I am. I found myself there, and it was one of the greatest things that's happened to me. How does your relationship reach outside of AHA? I would imagine that you see some of the students 
um, you know, in the community, and what is that relationship like? Oh, it, it's great. Uh, you bump into them at the farmer's market or down the street with their families, and, and it makes you feel part of the community, makes you feel part of the, there's that closeness, which I think it's great, and, and it's wonderful. Well, thank you, and we're going to be talking with a AHA success story, Leandra, Thank next. you very much. Thank you. So, as promised, we're here with Leandra Harris, who is a facilitator at AHA. And Leandra, I wanted to ask you, how did you become involved with AHA? Uh, it wasn't by choice. Um, I moved from San Jose, California to Santa Barbara, and I was just going to, down a really bad path. Like, I was not in a good place. So and my how grandma, old would you say you were at um, I was 15 years old. Okay. So I would just, I was culture shocked. I just moved out here. Like, I didn't know anybody. I had to start completely over. You know, I was going through a lot of stuff and it's completely different in mm -hmm. San Jose. And so I moved out here. My grandma hooked up with ISIS, who was one of the um, outreach coordinators okay. type. She was a recruiter for the program. And my grandma was like, you're going to this program, and blah, blah, I don't want to hear it. And I was just like, all right, I didn't have a choice. But I eventually just loved it. And <laughs> What would you say was kind of the breakthrough moment for you? Was it one thing? Was it a series when of I, Something that's huge for me, especially, is um, when I got to this program, the adults did not treat me like I was a child. Not saying that, you know what I mean? They, sure. they didn't make me feel like intimidated by them. And I mean, there was a lot of issues for me because of racially, I hadn't been around that many white people. So I was kind of intimidated because of that. And they made me feel welcome. They were very upfront and just very honest with us. And it was not like, you know how you go to after school programs or you go to some counseling sessions mm -hmm. where people are like, oh, well, you know, how does this make you feel? And sure. Da, da, da. And you're just like, no. That wasn't working, <laughs> yes. This is not, no. Okay. So. You've been through the program. As a, again, as a student, you're a facilitator now. Where would you like to see the program go? In it's about grown five years? so much since I've been in it, um, and I just want to continue to see it grow in five years. Hopefully, I want to go back home and start this back home. Um, I want to see it grow a little more throughout the country mm -hmm. and the, the state first, obviously. But um, yeah, I de in five years, I'm hopefully going to be like back home doing aha around my old neighborhood and stuff. You know, there are things that obviously the pro there are issues or topics maybe that you have to cover at AHA. Mm -hmm. um, but what is, what is it that you like to teach the kids? And do, are you able to teach them something about, or the, the teens, interest of music or film or anything in particular that you're able to share with them, something that is the special kind of Leandra touch to the program? I just like a real honesty. A lot of people <laughs> think I'm very upfront, kind of even mean sometimes, but you know, some people. So <laughs> but the no. ability to be honest, yes. that, or honest, that's perfect. Well, and funny. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, yeah. yes. Couldn't ask for any more than that. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much, Leandra, for, for sharing uh, your story and your experiences with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks. And this has been AHA, featured on Nonprofit Spotlight. Thanks for watching. For more information on the Nonprofit Spotlight, check our website at www.sbchannels.tv.